So I want to go over my uh, article I did for Medium to show how to use code, well, to go over the code that LaraChain uses to uh, actually speak to the LLM and make your PDF or CSV file uh, searchable. So when you go to the UI in LaraChain, it's quite easy. Uh, you just type away and ask a question, and it uses all the data you uploaded to then get an answer. Um, the, it's, it's, you know, pretty abstract, um, but in the end, I want to go over the code so you just see how it works. Uh, with most of this stuff, when I try to figure out a new uh, application, I typically start with the route. So when someone play, uh, presses the ask button, it makes a request to a route. Um, that particular route uh, we'll see in a moment uh, in the uh, view component. Uh, let's see here. That's the echo, we'll come back to that later. Here's the route. So this route is where that request goes into. So now let's see how this route uh, then eventually, uh, eventually talks to the LLM. Uh, so the controller then does a chat. Now here's where it gets pretty weird. So I'm gonna try and keep this simple because this is really abstract for, no, for the reason of being layer chain. It wants to be pluggable. For your system, it will be a lot easier. So in this case, the outbound area is what we're going to look at. We'll talk about the left side after. But that's how we get data into the system. But the outbound is a bunch of response types chained together. Uh, and with each one in place, we can start looking at uh, how easy it is to take a question from a user and then um, speak to the LLM to, to get some results and, and, and query the database. So in our, case, in our example, the first outbound is the, uh, sorry, the first response type is to, horrible name, is to take the user's question and make an embedding out of it. So this is where we speak to the API at, in this case, OpenAI, and we turn that particular question into an embedding, which is a vectorized style of data that um, is beyond me. Uh, but basically, I kind of see it as latitude, longitude. It just kind of helps you to make the data into a form that then you can query the database. And we'll see that in a moment. Uh, so now that we've vectorized the data or made an embedding out of it, the next chain in, in, in the response types um, will be uh, the vector search. So let's go look at the UI, one moment. And so the next one is the vector search, okay. So when we look at this one, it's so easy. We're just using Eloquent, we're passing it the embedding we just made, uh, and we do a query, a distance query. We've installed the plugin or extension for Postgres. I have docs about this. Um, and then we uh, just search and get things within that distance, and we limit it by 10 or five, just so we don't have too much data. Now that we have our data uh, that is relative to this, so it's like a very unstructured search, which is really nice about a vector database, it's really powerful that way, um, uh, is that now we can take these results and go to the next step. The next step in this example is to, uh, it's a very simple one, it's basically take all that content and combine it together. Uh, and so we're going to combine that content together to make a prompt. So we'll look at that in a moment. Sorry, there's a little delay here. This is my third time recording this, so I am watching the screen with you. Just give it a moment. I'm saying something brilliant here that has been wiped out. Do do do. These are what embeddings look like, by the way. It just comes back as this array that we vector and we put through the vector class. Again, combined content just mashes all these into a big, big uh, paragraph. I trim it down to be only so big because we can only use so many tokens, which have increased when we speak to the a a API. Here's the, but this is the part I think that's more interesting. This is where we actually do the chat. So now that we have the, the related documents squished together to make a few paragraphs, uh, and the user's question is embedded, uh, which doesn't matter, it's back to text now that we care about. We're gonna go talk to the chat API. Um, oh, and I'm just showing here another trim one you can use, but I wouldn't worry about that right now. It is nice though, because it saves a lot of space. But the chat UI is where we make the prompt, and you'll see the prompt is looking for the context. So right here, it's saying, it's asking it a question, keeping in context, and it's handing it all the results from the query. So now in our particular 
conversation with the API, we're going to include this as a prompt. And in a moment, you'll see it's, in this case, a system message. And so uh, we have a model in Laravel, in this case, called message. That model has a role, user, system, or assistant. And then it has the content, which will be the prompt, or the user's question, or the assistant's response. So we're building up this kind of message uh, array. The system one on top with the context, the next one's the user question. When we pass this off to the API, this array, it then uses that to understand where it is in the conversation uh, and obviously what the prompt is in the system one. When we get an answer from the um, API, we'll eventually save that as an assistant. And I'll show that in a moment. But here we are building up this message array, searching old messages, making sure we have the system one first, making sure we have the user one, then the, sorry, the system one, and then we have the user and assistant if we have any. And we pass that off to the API. So uh, one moment I'll go there. And I use this wrapper because I want it to work with any uh, LLM. But you'll see in here, um, I asked for a project. You don't need to do that. I just did that so I can speak back to, push the data back to the UI with WebSockets, and that gave me a place to push it to. But in here, we just pass the array to the, um, the chat API, and we have streaming set to on. And, oh, you'll see here, too, we have a broadcast channel. This is set up. It's a private one. So that's how we push all the information back to the UI. Uh, so during this chat conversation, um, as we get results from it, we then wait uh, for a little bit after passing it the array, and we send back results to the UI using events, uh, broadcasting events, uh, which then keeps updating the UI. I chunk it to 25. Maybe I could do less, and it would be less clunky in front. I have to think about that. But that's it. And then when it's done, we send the last message out as an event. Uh, and I think I have a listener there that says, okay, this is the last message. Um, we're going to... Uh, you know, save that as the assistant message. So we get to a point where now our message array is system, user, and assistant. And then the next question from the user will be, uh, the array will build up system, user, assistant, user. So then we have four items in our message array or our conversation. The system one always gets updated with the most recent context and the user one represents the most recent um, question, though the histor history, uh, the, the previous question helps too. Of course, this takes up token space, so you gotta you know consider that. So here, looking at the front end again, I have Echo listening to a private channel called Projects ID, and it's dot chat. Don't forget the dot, because uh, that's what I broadcast as. And so the event that I send this to. Uh, let me see, I'm going to do, do, do this event here. We'll have a broadcast as chat. There's no dot there, it's just how it works. And, and then we can listen to it. So that's how we can continue to push uh, information to the UI as the chat comes in. So it's really, really that simple. Now, um, that shows you how to take the user's question, embed the, emb embed the question, make it vectorize it, and then get some context from the vector database with that vectorized question. Make a prompt out of that uh, um, collection of, of results from the database. And, and that's it. So now as far as getting data into the system, it's pretty easy. Whether you upload a CSV or PDF, we all know how to do that. The only tricky part is after you get the data into the system, you have to turn it into embeddings as well. So, you know, you could do that anyway. Uh, many times you can do event listeners on models. Uh, so when they're done being updated or created, you can run it. In this case, I run a job um, or a batch or something, and it just talks to the OpenAI API, just like we did with the user's question, and gets the embeddings of that, um, uh, that particular document's page. Um, and... There's a lot to consider here. First, first of all, like it's a page, you could break it up into uh, by by many things. Just two hundred character, uh, two hundred tokens, and then before long, your page is you know uh, five chunks of a page, 
sorted by an order so that when you query, you get more uh, precise results because it's about that section. Uh, so that's one example. And this is, shows you how the vector is um, migrated with Laravel. Once you have the extension installed, there's a PHP library for it. I link to it in the uh, LaraChain docs. Um, once you have that installed, you can just run your migrations like normal and set this up. That particular number there, I always get it wrong. It seems to be different for the different applications I've been building. Sometimes it's that, and sometimes there's another one. I think it's like 20-something, 2,000-something. But the point is, if it errors out, you just change your migration, and that represents, um, uh, you know, your particular t uh, content. It's interesting, though. I don't know how... I, I Actually, I asked about it recently, and I forget the answer, but how to make that, uh, how to do that better. But otherwise, that's it. Data in, embedded, question in, embedded, search, results, turned into a prompt, and then you create your chat, um, and you just have a nice chat UI, uh, thanks to WebSockets and Pusher and Echo as well. All right, um, I think that's it for this video. Um, again, there's a Medium post about it, just depends if you like to read or listen to videos. Um, uh, otherwise, enjoy and good luck.